Haribol Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj, at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas. Thank you so much for your association every other week. We, real, we are really, really grateful. Um, devotees, I would like to announce that Maharaj's, uh, Mahar um, Chandramoli Swami Maharaj is here with us and he will continue to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam from Canto 5, Chapter 8, Verse Number 16. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, please take the call over. Hare Krishna. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yonatas My Shri Gurmi Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishishwa Sunyavari Pasyat Yade Satarine Anchakalpa Guru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Japatitanam Padme Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaha Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gada Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Okay, so. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So generally when we have the prose, we, we dispense with chanting the prose. We go right into the translation. Bart Maharaj would think, alas, the deer is now helpless. I'm now very unfortunate. My mind is like a cunning hunt hunter. It is always filled with cheating propensities and cruelty. The Dihar has put its faith in me just as a good man who has natural interest in good behavior forgets the misbehavior of a cunning friend and puts his faith in him. Although I have proved faithless, this Dihar re will return and place its faith in me. Will this Dihar return and place its faith in me? Uh, Purport by Srila Prabhupada, and Bart Maharaj was very noble and exalted. And therefore, when the deer was absent from him, he thought himself unworthy to give protection. Due to his attachment for the animal, he thought that the animal was a noble and exalted, and he is himself was. According to the logic of Atmavan Manyate Jagat, everyone thinks of others according to his own position. Therefore, Bart Maharaj felt that the deer had left him due to his negligence and that due to the animal's noble, noble heart, he would again return. This is an interesting pastime. There's many instructive uh, points throughout the entire pastime. It's one of the most instructive pastimes in the entire Bhagavatam in regards to the uh, execution of devotional service in that it teaches us certain principles that should be adopted and certain principles that must be carefully avoided. And one of the principles that should be avoided is that uh, one should uh, develop attachment for Krishna and not anything else. Attachment to anything else has value only when it's in relationship to Krishna. Attachment to anything else separate from Krishna is material and takes one's consciousness away from Krishna and away from devotional service. Attachment is life. One cannot uh, give up attachment. Attachment is the principle of life. 
And desire is the foundation where, where attachment develops. So de uh, desire must be directed towards Krishna, devotees and devotional service. <laughs> Here we see, due to his soft-heartedness, which is a characteristic of a devotee, um, he became uh, concerned about the uh, protection of an uncared for deer or baby deer. The mother had died right at childbirth. And now he was alone and the deer was there. So he gave himself the obligation of protecting the deer. Of course, we understand that Krishna is the protector of all living entities. So Krishna protects the animals too. Uh, if we interfere with that protection, in the sense that we create difficulty in the life of an animal, then we uh, somehow interfere with Krishna's protection and cause what we say harm to that living entity. Here, Bart Maharaj was pretty much uh, he was on a very high platform of devotional service, as we heard from previous verses, that his devotion to Krishna was on a level of uh, ecstasy and bhava. Uh, but now seeing this animal, he, uh, he sort of developed a kind of a sentimental attraction to the animal. Because of his soft heart of it, it's, he misplaced that in the sense that he took less importance to his uh, worship of the Lord, his austerities, his penances, his purpose for going for the forest became put aside in order to care for the deer. Now the deer is somehow gone and be, being attached to this deer he starts to vilify himself, criticize himself, talk about himself as being negligent and unworthy. And now he, he's imagining all these things. And this is what happens on a material level. Imagination is a very big part of material life. Due to a certain situation, people imagine, imagine things that are not true, create things that are not true, and find themselves speaking things that are not true based on these imaginations. Prabhupada gives a very instructive statement here, which is part of a, a larger verse, Atlavan Manyate Jagat. <laughs> Because I think that way, you also think that way. Mm -hmm. Everyone sees, everyone should, should see the world as I see it. Or everyone does see the world as I see it. Or at least a section of people think like that. Or a section of people feel like that. Why can everyone not see the way I see? And even if they don't, they should. Everyone thinks of others according to their own position. Because I like this, it's likable by everyone. <laughs> because I believe something is true, why don't you believe it's also true? But that is not factual. It's simply a feature of the mind's projection, that's all. So he thinks that the, the deer has left him due to his own negligence. But because the deer is a very noble person, he'll again return. So all these, he's, he's imagining all these things. <laughs> and um, why can't he get out of the imagination? It's because he's sentimentally attached to the deer or fit, attached to the deer's body. And you'll see as the verses go on, how that attachment turns into something very almost sensual and almost like a, a husband and a wife's attachment for each other or a lover 
two lovers attachment for each other. It, 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 it almost comes like a loving relationship. Although that rasa cannot be developed between contrary species. Rasa is only kept connected in the same species. You can care for an animal and you can feel concern for the animal's protection. You may also develop some affection for that animal, but that affection is based on caring for them, if that is the responsibility one is placed in. But one cannot have a loving relationship with an animal. People try to do that also. And some day they also, but the animal doesn't respond in the same way, although they think the animal is responding in the same way. Just like somebody who might have a loving relationship with their dog and the dog is licking their face, but the dog is thinking, boy, this guy, he smells really good. And maybe he would be good for supper, you know? <laughs> the animal doesn't have that same feeling towards the human being. <laughs> the animal is thinking, you know, he smells like a good, good part of the, a recipe that I could, you know, get into. <laughs> So the animal, you know, we try to have these loving relationships with animals and it's just contrary to the uh, arrangement of material energy. But there is some concern. And, and so due to his concern for the welfare of the animal, he doesn't know that God takes care of all living entities in any situation that animal would have been taken care of by the Lord, if even if Bart wasn't there. But he doesn't know that because God gives protection to all living entities accordingly. Uh, there's one example of one great uh, proponent of Srimad Bhagavatam, his name is Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami, prior to, prior to becoming a sannyasi, was a grihasta and he was living with his uh, family well actually he didn't have a family he had a wife who was pregnant and at the time of childbirth the wife died and there was no one else to take care of the child but him so he was thinking i want to take sannyas and now I have the responsibility of taking this care of this child. And then he's thinking what to do. And then he uh, sees a lizard crawling along. Uh, it's actually a baby lizard, a little tiny baby lizard. It fell from the mother, it just was born. And there the lizard is just there, little baby. And all of a sudden, a fly comes within the range of the lizard, and the lizard eats the fly. So seeing that, he got the understanding, yes, God takes care of all living entities. And he immediately left and took sannyas. <laughs> Some people will take issue with that. But later on, he became such a great proponent of Srimad Bhagavatam that his commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam were considered to be the, the, the reference where all other commentaries start and develop. He is considered the commentary and commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam Sri Swami. So you see, uh, you know, his destiny was not to stay in family life and take care of children, but to become a great proponent of Srimad Bhagavatam. So God takes care of all living entities. There are elephants in the forest who don't have anybody to take care of. Now, elephant eats 40, 40 kgs of food per day, which is about 82 pounds. Who's feeding it? God. The birds get up in the morning. When they get up, immediately they look for food. Who's arranging for, the, for them to get their food? The Lord. The Lord's arranging for everyone to take to get their necessities of life simply through the arrangement of material energy. And so here we see how he's lost that vision and he's become, uh, what we say, sentimentally attached to a deer. And this sentimental 
he actually, you'll see later on, he actually leaves his body thinking of the deer and in his next life, he becomes a deer. <laughs> and that's coming up. It's really an interesting. So you, we, we, can, we can evaluate from this. I mean, one of the major qualities of a devotee is that he's soft hearted. The same with Arjuna. When Krishna was on the battlefield, just about to start the war with the, the Kurus, uh, Arjuna became overwhelmed with concern for the welfare of the soldiers on the other side who were his family members. And, and he was, he, his teachers were there, his grandfather was there, cousins, relatives, well-wishers, friends, people who he grew up with, people he loved, all were ready to fight against him. And therefore, he uh, told Krishna, I'm not fighting, became overwhelmed with uh, emotion. Krishna saw what was happening and then he instructed him. He said, Asochaman Vasochams Twam Pratyavadam Shibasa Say Gatatsums Akadatsums Chant Nanupan Nanu Shochandi Panditaha Panditaha. You are speaking loaded words, but you're not understand that um, you, you do not know what is worthy of grief. Those who are wise never lament for the living nor the dead. Arjuna's good qualification was he was soft-hearted, but Krishna criticized that soft-heartedness because he gave up his service to Krishna based on this material attachment. And later on, after being instructed by Krishna, it was clear to him that his only, the best service that he could perform for, for his friends and well-wishers and for Krishna was to fight on behalf of religious principles. So the Lord is the author of morality and civility. For the Lord, there is no morality or civility. He lives according to his own principles, which sometimes Many times are in accordance with the moral and ethical principles that we follow in day-to-day -day life. But in sometimes, sometimes they go contrary, like in this battle of Kurukshetra. They seem to go contrary. What was Arjuna's good quality? He was soft-hearted, but his soft-heartedness was, took him away from his intelligence. So sentiment is good, but it should be coupled with intelligence. When intelligence guides sentiment in the right direction, then the outcome is always auspicious. But if one does not have intelligence or cannot understand a situation intelligently and is moved simply by emotion, emotion is very strong and sometimes it overshadows intelligence a lot of times. We have the example of uh, of um, Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was uh, very attached to his family members, his sons, especially his um, main sons, Dushashana and Duryodhana. And therefore, uh, he knew his sons were wrong. He was advised by his younger brother, Vidura. Uh, Vidura gave him wise counsel. But he couldn't hear. And he even said, you know, I know what you're saying is, is, is correct, but I can't follow it. <laughs> I can't follow it. Why? Because yeah, I'm attached to my family members. They're wrong, but that's my attachment. Of course, later on, he became sober and understood things clearly. But at that particular time, so the Rasta was the prime example of attachment, knowing this attachment was contrary to what Krishna wanted and what was best for everyone. So there's an example where intelligence is even given and one cannot accept it. Just like you see um, on the package of the uh, cigarettes when they sell in the marketplaces, it says, you know, it used to say smoking causes lung cancer, emphysema, 
complications in pregnancy and so many other things. Now they don't put that anymore. They put smoking kills, you know, just two words, just big letters. And still, you know, the cigarette industry is still very profitable. <laughs> Knowing that this is harmful for my health, the biggest cause of cancer in the world is lung ca cancer caused by cigarette smoking. That is an, that is an actual fact. Uh, this has been corroborated by doctors. And uh, still, people smoke. If you tell a person that they shouldn't smoke, they might get angry at you, or they might feel bad knowing that they, you're right, and at the same time, they can't stop. <laughs> so uh, our attachments, if they're not uh, directed towards something that is beneficial, which means uplifting our consciousness towards Krishna, ultimately they will lead us to more and more material entanglement and many, many problems. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people know, well, I know this is right, but I can't do it. <laughs> That's called, um, Ridoya Labdava, Labdia, Ridaya Labda. It means called weakness of the heart. Uh, knowledge is there, but intelligence is overshadowed by emotional or material attachments. So you see that in this same situation here. He's very much overwhelmed with taking care of this deer at the expense of everything, so much so that he gives up his uh, his his puja, his worship, his uh, his devotional activities, and focuses all his attention on this deer. And of course, later on, he regrets it when he gets another birth as a deer. He remembers his past life. So. Um, yeah, if we remain attached to anything in this material world, it's the cause of another birth in this material world. It may be a good birth because we are devotees, engaged in devotion, but still another birth means more and more struggle, more and more difficulties, and more and more time wasted, uh, str uh, unnecessarily struggling with the material energy. So one should regularly hear from Shastra, from Guru, and ask questions that are relevant to one's advancement in Krishna consciousness. We like to hear philosophical knowledge, but we're afraid to face our attachments. But one who's actually intelligent wants to know what are my attachments and how to remove those attachments. And you can ask another devotee, what is my attachments? You know, if he's your friend or she's your friend, they'll tell you. If they're simply, a, 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 you know, a sentimental friend, they'll say, oh, you're so nice and everything about you is so nice. They're not doing you any favor by that. <laughs> of course, they shouldn't do it in a critical way, but if one should ask, I remember we did a uh, exercise in the Chicago temple with Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Uh, oh, that was back in the beginning of the century. And Maharaj was conducting a kind of like a workshop demonstration uh, in understanding uh, our relationship with each other and what are the characteristics and qualities that are needed for developing these relationships. So at one point he set up a particular um, workshop where he invited everyone to pair off in twos and you had to ask the other person, tell me what's wrong with me? <laughs> and then you get a chance to and then the other person do. Now, that was a little hard for some people, and some people didn't do it. <laughs> they just didn't want to get go down that road. But for those who did it, 
you know, it's attack on the false ego, of course, uh, obviously. The, the false ego thinks I'm okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay with me. I, maybe I have some problems, but they're not so important. And, uh, you know, I'll get to them sometime or other. <laughs> the false ego will make you think everything is all right. He's in control. And uh, even if there's something not right, don't worry. We'll fix it in due course of time like that. But the, long, the longer a material attachment remains, the stronger it gets. And this is a factor. So therefore, we should emphasize and cultivate attachment to Krishna. Yeah. His attachment to Krishna was strong, but he hadn't reached prema yet. Because he hadn't reached prema, there was still that element of uh, a tendency that was covered that he again became attracted to something in the material world. And that attraction caused him to take two more births. One is a deer, and then the next birth is Judd Bart, who was aware of his previous births, and he he lived his life in such a way that he avoided everything material, and uh, ultimately went back home, back to Godhead. So um, yeah, this is a very uh, interesting pastime, and you'll see how it plays itself out. That, we have to get attached to Krishna. And the way you get attached to Krishna is by serving Krishna and by hearing about Krishna. By hearing about Krishna means reading about Krishna, hearing uh, narrations about the pastimes and activities, qualities and associates of Krishna. Learning about the nature of Krishna how he deals with people, how he deals with the material energy, how he conducts his own self in relationship to his eternal devotees. Uh, there's a whole world of knowledge all about Krishna. And we want that knowledge because that will take our consciousness into, into Krishna. And when you're in Krishna, you're, in, you're ab above the material energy. And if you keep that consciousness and develop it, and ultimately then when the time comes to leave the body, you'll be back with Krishna in the spiritual world. And that is the, perf the perfection of life because then all our desires completely, eternally are fulfilled. So here uh, we see what we need to avoid, and that is sentimental, or material attachments. So make the intelligence strong by reading Shastra, by hearing from great souls, and by repeating that this, 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 uh, this knowledge to others. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so very much for another wonderful class. I'm always so grateful when you come on the call because your classes are always so um, comprehensive, but you have such a special way of saying things that always land on me in, in a very deep way. I really appreciated the points that you made about um, the 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 um, the way that you put every animal is under Krishna Krishna's protection. So when we do something, you know, to put them in distress or harm them, we're actually you know, trying to interfere with Krishna's protection. And I, that just gave me another way to look at it because I'm always, um, you know, trying to protect animals. And, and when I talk to other people about it, they don't quite get it 
you know, the same way that I do, but that was a very, very powerful way to um, get that across. Um, I also very, oh, go, I'm sorry, were you going to say something? Uh, no, no, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> okay. And I also very much appreciate all of the things you just said about attachment, um, especially the comment about, um, you know, how strong emotion is and, and oftentimes, you know, emotion can overcome our intelligence and, um, and also the distinctions you, you made about, um, you know, for us to try to avoid not just material attachment, but also sentimental attachment. That really, really um, hit me in a, in a very big way. You know, as a mother and as a woman, you know, we tend to <laughs> be sentimental about, about certain things that, um, you know, aren't uh, necessarily so helpful. To our yeah, well, there, there is spiritual sentiment, and that is the nature. Uh, emotion is the highest principle of bhakti also, but unless emotion is guided by intelligence, it can go in any direction. So we want sentiment, we want a, in, an emotion, but we want it has to be guided accordingly. Otherwise, it could go in any direction and uh, be seen as something good or spiritual, and it may not be. So therefore, we have to hear regularly and understand and reflect on basically what we hear. When knowledge reaches a certain point and guides uh, emotion, then on the highest platform you see, emotion takes over completely. Mm. But that's perfection. And you have the example of the gopis. The gopis are simply emotionally attached to Krishna completely. But they have gone through the period of intelligence to reach that stage of pure emotion. But unless we go through that stage, then it, there's still elements of material attachment that can enter into our emotional expressions. And that's what the example you had with Arjuna. And Arjuna is the prime example of that. But emotion is the highest form of bhakti. It's the way this is, it's about loving Krishna. And love is the highest and most strongest emotion. But unless it's guided through the process, through different stages, it may take, it may off, go off to the side and see something that is material as being spiritual. And that's what uh, Bart Maharaj said. He, 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 might, he, might, he may be thinking that his attachment to the deer was spiritual, but it wasn't because it led him away from his spiritual practice. Therefore, it was material. Yes, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I think that sometimes um, we look at our protection of animals or our care for animals as something spiritual um, and um, you know, without, without having the proper um, Kind of well, that animal is also a spirit soul. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, it's a nice, nice little cuddly pussycat. It's actually, <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, it's a spirit soul <laughs> who has come by the arrangement of God for some reason into our uh, association. So we can also take care of it. But then, then again, um, taking care of it means you know, giving it what it needs to live nicely. And because it's a spirit, so we can also give it Krishna consciousness through the process of, of spiritual vibrations. That's the benefit. We can uh, make it, uh, you know, Lord Chaitanya brought two dogs back to Godhead. <laughs> Of course, we're not Lord Chaitanya. He brought a tiger. He made tigers in the in the uh, Jerry kind of forest dance. Bears, tigers, elephants. So uh, we're not on that level, but we we can provide spiritual vibrations 
-hmm. for the animals and so they can uh, become a little uh, purified. And if they live their life in the association of devotees and die in that situation, it's a very good chance, probably a very good chance. They'll not very good. It's probably guaranteed they will take a human birth in their next life. Maybe in a very good family too. So we can elevate that soul that's in that body of our animal along the path of evolution where they can skip many of the other steps and, and get a higher birth. I also wonder, so, but is it important to also keep that distinction that they are an animal and that, so that we don't have that kind of attachment, like you were saying with Bard Maharaj, where his attachment started to become a little too... Um... It's, it's, it's more like caring for the animal. It's more like a, it's more like a nurturing. Bard almost, you can see in the remaining verses, it's almost he, like he had attachment, like a husband and wife have attachment for each other. His attachment went so into, the, into that area that you'll see in the verses that come up how much he laments when the deer doesn't come back. It's like loss of his, you know, his wife or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. His attachment went in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when I used when I used to have a dog, he passed away a couple of years ago, and I was very I loved him very much and and took took very good care of him, but. You know, I had a very, it was very clear to me that he was my pet and not my, you know, sometimes my friends would say, oh, he's like your child. And I'd say, no, he's not my child. <laughs> he's my dog. I, I take good care of him. I love him, but he's not my child. So yeah, it's a caring thing, but it's not, you know, it's nothing more than that. Just like we care for, well, we care for people in order to bring them closer to Krishna. That's real compassion, that's real care. Not simply this bodily connection. Bodily connection is based on just a certain feature of sentiment that comes and goes. Because that bodily connection could be there for any, for other, li other persons or other living, living entities too. It doesn't mean just because I have this particular dog or cat or uh, this one is Special, it's special because I have it. But if I had another one, that wouldn't be special too. <laughs> so that's the, it's, it's the nurturing thing. It's the spiritual thing. You know, keep it connected to sound vibration. That's the best thing. And give it prasadam. Mm -hmm. Those two things, if you do, then you're helping that soul move forward. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you mm -hmm. for taking the time to give me such wonderful answers. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful class and thanks for such enlightening examples that you gave and um, pragmatic, very pragmatic. And we all know that how this um, attachment turns into an addiction. And we know it, yet it's so difficult to come out of that attachment. It's a wonderful class, Mahalash. Thank you. Just to get attached content. to Krishna, that's... Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Very, very nice, Maharaj. Very, very nice. And I think we keep trying. So the modes of material nature, it attacks us so bad. So in the morning time, we think, oh, it's wonderful. We are attached to Krishna's holy name. But when we go back to work or doing something work, and then unknowingly, we think that we crave for this, we crave for that. It's interesting how we know. Material attachments go, go, are long-term and they go very deep. They're not always on the surface. Mm. Our attachment for Krishna is even deeper, but it, because it's more covered, it's, it seems to be less, uh, less available or less there within our life. But our material attachments are more, more on the surface. 
or just below the surface. Right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful explanations. Devotees, if we have any questions, we can either unmute our phone or we can raise hand, whatever you want. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, uh, such a beautiful, beautiful uh, class, Maharaj. I have a question, Maharaj, can I ask? Hare Krishna Maharaj, when you are talking about uh, Bharat Maharaj's story, Bharat Maharaj has to take two more lives. But uh, in the animal life, uh, he would re he was remembering everything, and he was always in the sage's place. But if if we see uh, Gajendra, Gajendra could go back to Godhead with the animal body. Why was Bharat Maharaj had to take another birth? Can can you please make me understand, Maharaj? Hare Krishna. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, using the example of Gajendra, Gajendra offered beautiful prayers that he had remembered in a previous life when he was a king. He was a king named Indra Jumna. He had fallen from a human birth into this animal birth because of some, he can't remember why. But uh, he remembered somehow as an animal, he remembered prayers from his human form of life. Um, why is it different in this situation? Um, because he hadn't reached Prema yet. He fell short when he was in his body as Bart Maharaj. He didn't reach the stage of Prema. He had reached the stage of Bhava. And in the deer's body, all he did was avoid uh, all he did was hear from sages. He would just go by the sages as a deer. He stayed away from other deers also. So obviously he was undergoing more and more purification, but it wasn't pure enough. And so he was forced to take that next birth as Jadva Bart. And in that birth, he was completely recollective of his previous lives, even as his life as a deer. And he simply acted completely like a madman. He was Jada. Jada means dumb. He acted like a deaf, a deaf and dumb person who has no intelligence, but he was that because he didn't want to get entangled in material life. So obviously, in that deer's body, he didn't reach the stage of, you know, Prema. But Gajendra somehow or other did by the mercy of the Lord. You'd have to study their previous births, especially Gajendra's, to see. Or you might also say that he, he had a mission to come back and purify King Rahugana, which he did. Some people say, of course, I only heard this once. Uh, I'm not sure how authoritative it is. So don't take it as authority, but it's interesting. Some people say that 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 deer took birth as King Rahugana. And uh, Jad Bart being Bart Maharaj, so the, the same two people were again together in different bodies. Yeah, 
much. Thank you so much for beautiful explanation and very, very nice class. I really like the point uh, where you are telling that uh, the friend is the one who explains what's wrong with us, not always, you know, just says that, oh, you're good, you're good. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I'll try to work on that. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> The Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, I have like a little question about that, the thing forward, going forward, about the, uh, <coughs> I should bring it closer. Uh, uh, in, in the, in the Dimna Maharaj, he was cursed by, I think, uh, I forgot the name of the city. So he, to become a, because he uh, he was doing tapasya and he was in the meditation. And that time, the one son, uh, Rishi came and uh, he, Rishi just saw that he's just sitting and doing nothing and he's not even, yeah, I'm not welcoming him or getting some water or anything. So he's acting like a dumb animal, elephant. So, he curses him. So, but then he how he was performing devotional service in the Dimna Maharaj, and he was also doing some prayers to the. So those prayers in a body of a Gajendra, he remembered and he offered those prayers, and the Lord came and saved him, and you know just took him, sent him back to Vaikuntha. So, what would be the about the Bharat Maharaj? He mm -hmm. about the Bharat Maharaj in a body of a deer. Uh, he couldn't offer prayer or anything, something like that. <laughs> it doesn't say. We don't really know whether he offered prayers or not. There's no indication anywhere. He, to say he didn't may be wrong, and to say he did may be wrong. We don't, don't know. But we know that Sadhu Sangha was his main thing to associate with the book, Sadhus. And he would listen to their discourses. Thank you, Maharaj. That was his. That, that was his saving grace. He knew how to. He knew where to go for association. And Krishna protected him because it was an accidental fall down. Yeah. It wasn't due to any offenses. It was just due, due to weakness of heart. Oh, so the, okay. So, in the Dima Maharaj, we consider like a, that was offense, not welcoming to Rishi, while in his uh, meditation. Rishi's, well, if you, if you go deeper into that pastime, you'll find that that was a benediction because in the next life, he went back to Godhead. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisance. I mean, Gusta Muni is Gusta Muni is one of the. Gusta Muni, yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. the dinner, Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, uh, um, I have a question. Um, uh, even though there, you know, we, I mean, I go through some bad habits, uh, even though uh, we know that we have to keep them away, um, but still, the uh, the mind when you try to avoid them, mind tends to um, you know bring them back or 
tries to you know make you very anxious trying to go away from them and uh, but how to overcome that impetus and uh, you have to control the mind by the intelligence and place the intelligence in, in Krishna that's all and bhakti yoga is a moment by moment activity of keeping the mind directed towards Krishna as soon as you're not directed towards Krishna or devotional service the mind will go to something material and generally it goes to something that it likes or something that is disturbing either one if you have to solve a problem you can do that but at the same time we should all understand that our real problems real problems are solved by the power of our devotional service so the whole process of bhakti yoga is directing the mind towards krishna <laughs> Uh, the example was uh, Ambarish Maharaj, who used everything in the service of the Lord. So, yeah, if we allow the mind to go in different directions, it'll, it can go anywhere. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's such a big struggle, um, uh, and even though you know you're not supposed to do it, um, you tend to avoid it, but you know that's wrong, but still it kind of drags you that way. And if you try to avoid it, yeah, the false ego says, I can solve it. No. Or the false ego likes it. And there's a subtle, there also might be subtle attachments to that particular thought, even though it may be partially unpleasant, there is some attachment there. Uh, Replacing negativity is done by focusing on Krishna or something positive. Or any thought that is material it simply has to be directed to Krishna. This Krishna consciousness is not something that is part-time. If you try to perform it part-time, that's what you'll get. <laughs> you'll get that much out of it. As Krishna says, Yayatam mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham. As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. So those who are constantly, he said, those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give them, he says, I personally give them the understanding by which they can come to me. So keeping your mind focused on Krishna means awakening our attachment to Krishna. As attachment develops, attraction becomes stronger, and as attraction becomes stronger, it turns into affection. As affection develops and becomes full, it turns into pure love. Then there's no question about anything else but Krishna or Krishna's service. It's a process. But if we allow our mind to go into material things, and we waste time with trying to solve things we can't solve because you can't solve things in the mind anyway. I find even if you have a material problem, forget about it, just chant Hare Krishna. And then Krishna at one point will show you the solution automatically. Not that you don't even have to try to think about it. The answer will come to you automatically. Focus on Krishna, everything is positive. Even dealing with material energy becomes easy or normal. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Any, any last minute questions for Maharaj? Namo Mishra Pradaya Krishna Krishna Mughalya Shamati Yabhadaga Swami Dhamma Namo Chari Parayin Nita Guru Vena Gaurgara Ramadaya Nairam Namo Mishra Pradaya Krishna Krishna Mughalya Shamati Yabhadaga Swami Dhamma Namo Chari Parayin Nita Guru Vena Gaurgara Ramadaya Nairam Hari Paul, Prabhuji, Mataji, we cannot hear you. Lalita Tangi, please begin again. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to your grace for your association. Very wonderful class, Maharaj. Each and every line is so precious, uh, loaded with your realizations and experience. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, so I was uh, I was wanting to know more about that exercise um, that Bhakti Tita Maharaj did, uh, asking everyone. <laughs> to pair and ask what's wrong with me. So that's so interesting. Could you tell more <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Not everybody participated. He kind of shocked everybody with that one. <laughs> it, was a, it was a test. I mean, he prefaced the whole thing by explaining the benefit of this particular thing. And he also explained how we sh should be done in the, in the proper mood and not in the critical way, but with concern and with compassion towards the person. But it's shocking for some of us, some, some were shocked, you know, to hear. And they said a lot of people knew that what people were saying was correct. <laughs> because, you know, we don't see ourselves like other people see us. <laughs> you know. We think we're okay. We look in the mirror and we smile. We think, you know, uh, I'm number one. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of, uh, you know, it's like there's those, um, And there was a one king, I think it was, I forgot his name, but he had a, uh, a jester, which was like assisted to, and he would always, and uh, it was like, uh, he would ask the jester, you know, sometimes kings, you know, they get caught up in all kinds of material things, so they need a little break, something to give them some humor or something more relaxing. So he would keep, keep this one gesture, and then sometimes he would ask him a question. And the gesture would always come back with something critical. For instance, people, what's the difference between you and an ass? So Gopal took out a measuring stick and measured the distance between him and the king, and he said, six feet. <laughs> so the king liked that, you know. <laughs> it's kind of witty, but at the same time. So, you know, sometimes we need somebody, you know, if we're married, it's not a problem. <laughs> you get it all the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> But for sannyasi, sometimes we have to, you know, make arrangements to get it. <laughs> that is so nice. Thank you, Maharaj. And I like the line that you said, the longer the attachment is, uh, the stronger it becomes. Yeah. That is so... Yeah, that's food for yeah, thought you, today. As soon as we recognize an attachment, we should be thinking to purify it, to get it directed towards Krishna or get rid of it like that immediately. It'll grow as long as when it stays. And when you think about it, it grows even faster. <laughs> This is something, there's, there's sometimes, there's things that we're not supposed to be looking at or doing, but we have a curiosity towards that out of just because we don't know about it. So, you know, it's dangerous to try to explore that area because we know it's not right, but we're curious about what it's about. And then we find ourselves in a very... The best thing to avoid these things is, is good association. Because when you're in good association, 
it's very unlikely you'll fall into the, uh, you know. So marriage can also be a way of uh, having someone there to help you when you go through these different attachments. Friendship, relationships like that. It's always good. Yes, Mara, that's very true. <clears throat> we may put up a face, I mean, I, uh, my point, to the others uh, as a devotee, but the close family members, the husband and children who are watching us 24 hours uh, being with us, there's no, there's no escaping with them. We can't act uh, <laughs> always. <laughs> so they will know what it is. So that way it's very right. When, when the family is devotees and you're staying with them and they see <laughs> you, that's very good for improvement. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, but in order to make sure things develop in the right way, everything should be done with, with care and a, a concern and affection and not simply out of annoyance. If somebody, somebody, something somebody's doing because it annoys you or somebody's not doing something and it annoys you. That annoyance is more like a, an expression of a false ego rather than helping them overcome their situation. I've seen marriages ruined like that where there's something wrong with the person but rather than dealing with it in the right way, uh, they, just, they just get into, because they've developed some familiarity, you just tell each other directly. And a lot of times that doesn't work. You want to ruin a marriage? Just tell your husband what to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you want your husband to do something, you have to, you have to make him come to that decision by, by what you do with him. And that, that's the secret of marriage. The wife can tell the husband, but without telling the husband. Yeah, the women, they know that art. I don't really know it's so good, but but if you, if the women tell their husbands what's wrong with them, because I heard one, one husband told me, and not told me, but the wife told me about this. She said that my, I would tell my husband what to do. And he's, he would say, you know, what you're telling me to do, I know is right, but because you're telling me, I, I can't do it. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's called the male ego. <laughs> that's the male ego. So the wife has to know how to do it in such a way that it's very sweet, loving, and, and he comes to abide by his own uh, choice. See, I know a little bit about marriages. <laughs> not, 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 so, not so much. But anyway. no, since you're transcendental to it, you can see it from a, like an elevation uh, viewpoint, Maharaj. You can see everything. <laughs> we are in it. We cannot yeah, we, see everything. I, I, I see it because people talk to me about it. That's why. <laughs> And if the husband wants to help his wife, he should do it in a sweet way. By giving her flowers, nice, you know, jewelry, saris, good food, a lot of compliments. Rather than pushing her into a corner and telling her she's wrong this way, that way, this way, that way. He has to do it in a very sweet, but direct way. But the wife can't do it directly with the husband. She has to do it in a less direct way. That makes so much sense, Maharaj. <laughs> very true. Male and female psychology. <laughs> you know, it's all in Prabhupada's books. It's not like we're coming from something secular or material. It has certain certain elements there, but it's actually part of our philosophy. 
Srimad Bhagavatam deals with everything. Every subject that you need to know is there in Bhagavatam. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you for being you. <laughs> you. You are so merciful, Maharaj, because of your association. We are trying to improve, not wasting this human life. So all glories to you, Maharaj. I need, I need to do the same thing. <laughs> That's why everyone gives me a chance to speak something so I can learn something from what I speak. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Manur Pranam, Adhoshita Shinda Prasad, Manur Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very, very beautiful, beautiful class and very nice instructions you give. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anybody has a question? Shri Devi Mataji. Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, this was such an illuminating class and really a big eye-opener to look at our own attachments and how they may be blocking us. My question is about having an attachment for our family members to become devotees. Is it an attachment to think, oh, I really want my daughter to become a devotee. I want my dad to become a devotee. I want them to take Krishna consciousness seriously. And then uh, does that make us very pushy and preachy and that's an attachment? No, Prabhupada wanted the whole world to be Krishna conscious. <laughs> what to speak of a couple of people, but he knew how to do it. Question is, do you know how to do it? And that's understanding the psychology and nature of the person you're trying to help. There's different, you know, there's different ways to get to approach the same problem depending on the details. You don't, you know, you don't always relate to everything in the same way, because people are different, situations are different. Mm. You no, know, it's bad as, if that is the concern, then the concern should be how to do it in such a way that it's accepted. If it's not accepted, if it's like, well, I'm the mother and you're the daughter, that's not, that's not going to work. Because now she's grown up and she's a lady herself. Mm. She's no longer, in one sense, a daughter. She's a friend. That's Johnny Gupandit. Treat her like a friend, then you have better relationships. When you, in order to make a difference with a person, you have to establish relationship with them. If you don't establish relations or if the relationship has been uh, broken or interrupted, then you had first thing to do is repair the relationship then before you can move forward on trying to help in any way. Mm -hmm. You know, two people can say the same thing, two different people can say the same thing to the same person, and that person will accept it from one and not accept it from the other. You know, everything is very personal. So you have to have a, you have to develop that relationship. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I can see that I'm the person who has to do the work of changing myself 
so that I don't come across as someone pushing something onto them, but they see that there's something valuable here for me. I'll give you an example. You know, Prabhupada didn't like devotees, you know, growing beards. He spoke against them. But he knew when he would, the devotee would be there, if he somehow said something directly to them, they might go farther away. So Prabhupada knew in order to develop a, a better relationship, because sometimes even the guru thinks, well, that's my disciple and I should tell them what to do. But disciples don't always accept what the guru says because their attachments are stronger than their, their, their relationship with their spiritual master. So what Prabhupada did with well, one person, he came in with a big beard and came to see Prabhupada and see. Prabhupada just gave him some service. He said, can you do this for me? And he was happy to do something. And based on that service, the relationship started to develop again. Mm. Like that. Like I, what I did to one disciple. <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. I don't know if it, how much it works. But this disciple doesn't chant. He doesn't chant much. He's, he's, a, he's not initiated. He's an aspiring disciple. He doesn't chant. So I'm giving a class and I'm talking about the holy name. And, um, and I'm glorifying Krishna in his name. And he's in the class. There's about 70 people in the class. So at one point I said, and I pointed to him and I said, he's a perfect example for someone who really likes to chant Hare Krishna. But it was completely wrong, you know. And some people who were listening online were laughing like crazy. And others were thinking, what is he saying? But I did that just to inspire him to chant <laughs> by putting him in that situation. So sometimes, you know, if I tell him chant Hare Krishna, he'll say, oh, yeah, Maharaj, I know you're right. But that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so attachments go deep and it's all about establishing relationships mm. I can see that Guru Maharaj, I can see that one must become very expert in understanding how to reach the heart of that person and that takes a lot of self reflection and prayer and, and uh, deep. takes knowing the person right, right Yes, Guru. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Beautiful answer. Thank you so much for your guidance. Yeah, human psychology is very complex. <laughs> yes, Guru. Mara. Thank you very much. Especially in this age, people are not so much fixed on relationships. <laughs> Okay, anything else before we end our session? That's it. Trying to speak for some time. Hari Bhav, Hare Krishna, Jai Dear Govinda Ji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Maharaj. Radhe Radhe, Dandavat. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> hmm. We can end now. One shakal patalu beshya, kripa sindhu beva chakra. Gita nam bhavane bhyo, Vaishnave bhyo, namo namo namo. Lalita and Dina Bandhu, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Guru Maharaj.
हरे कृष्णा गुरु महाराज नाथ प्रणाम महाराज We have a wonderful program. We have a wonderful program going. Keep going. It's such an important thing having Bhagavatam every day for devotees. It's so edifying and so necessary in our spiritual practice, and it keeps the devotees together. Hari Bhagavan. From the philosophy and Krishna, it's really important. Thank you, and that's all due to the. I, I'm not sure. I guess Shyamagori is one of the first to start it, but. No, Maharaj. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. Yeah. We need your blessings, Maharaj. I'll be here every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Uh, the weather is getting warm, so don't stay in the house. <laughs>